Hey, welcome to the shop today. The delivery guy just happened to drop off one of my Black Friday purchases. Uh, earlier this month, I ordered a Char's Quick Change tool post for my Atlas Craftsman 12 inch lathe and uh, opened the box. And turns out I need to do a little bit of modification to the base plate in order to mount it on my cross slide. So, uh, I do not have a mill in the shop, so we're going to see if we can get this done on the lathe and using a uh, belt sander and also a horizontal bandsaw. So I uh, hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching. To get started on this project, I just took the basic measurements on the compound T-slide. So the basic issue with the base plate provided with the quick change tool post is that they make it big enough that it will go on, I believe, some of the South Bend or Logan 10 and 12 inch lathes. So it's a little bit beefier than what you'll find on the Atlas or the Craftsman 12 inch. Um, so that's a good problem because there's enough material that uh, I can make it work. Using the measurements, I was able to mark out the base plate for how much metal needed to be removed. Since it was a significant amount, I decided to use my horizontal metal bandsaw to remove the bulk of the material before we end up putting it in the lathe. To bring the width of the base plate to the final dimension, I decided to use the belt sander to sand right up to the layout line. This ended up working out pretty well and then ended up deburring right before we head over to the lathe. I try to keep a small container of water near the belt sander and the pedestal grinder just to uh, dip the parts in when I'm working with them to help avoid burning myself. The base plate is not the correct width, but it is still way too thick for the Atlas Craftsman compound. So if I had a mill, this would be really, really easy, but I don't. So I do have a four jaw chuck that I think we can fold the material in and uh, just take a few facing cuts to bring it into the final dimension. So we'll get rid of the three jaw chuck here and get the four jaw on and see how it fits. At this point, it became pretty apparent that I would have a little bit of a problem. So you can see when I'm tightening the jaws in this configuration that the first two fit fine, but when you try to bring in the other two jaws on the narrow width, uh, they don't go in far enough. They end up hitting at the ID. So what I ended up doing was just putting two small pieces of key stock on either side to keep the jaws out. And uh, we're gonna keep the lathe in its slowest speed here just to make sure nothing comes flying out and hurts anybody. For the facing passes, I'm just using high-speed steel hand ground uh, held in the lantern tool post that we we're trying to get rid of here. And it's an interrupted cut, so you know, I'm not too worried about the surface finish. We will be headed back to the belt sander after we get the part to the correct thickness.
with the interrupted cut this did end up taking a while and quite a few passes but it did get the job done and it turned out okay nothing that the belt sander can't fix I wanted to make sure I had a pretty decent sized chamfer on all edges of this part just to make sure there was nothing sharp and to clear any potential radiuses in the T-slot. The one downside of using the sander to clean up the surface finish is that the threads in the part got all loaded up with uh, grinding grit, essentially. So just using a small nylon brush to clean out the threads. On the initial test fit, I did find that there was a small burr in the bottom of the T-slot that kept it from sliding through the whole way. So once that burr was cleaned up, uh, it fits pretty good. So, for the moment of truth, we uh, put the quick change tool post on and see how it fits. Uh, my initial impression was that it is a little bit bigger than what I was expecting. They do make one size that's smaller than this. I think it's the OXO or 0x0 for smaller lathes. Um, but in general, I think the half-inch tooling will work out pretty good with this configuration. Um, so we'll set up a test cut here in a second and see what it does. The test cut here is just on some one inch bar stock. I'm not exactly sure what kind of steel it is. It's a good chance it's 4140 annealed, um, just a drop from work. And I didn't really try to dial in the uh, speeds and feeds at all here. I was getting close to the end of the time I had available in the shop. I had to get back inside and take care of the kids. But, um,. In general, I'm pretty happy with it. We'll have to see here over the next couple projects how it holds up and see if it really helps this uh, Craftsman lathe you know, turn a little bit better than what I was experiencing before. But at the end of the day, it's still a Craftsman lathe, so curb your expectations. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you uh, if you didn't hate this video. Um, let me know. This is one of the first videos I've really tried to put together and uh, edit and all that good stuff. So uh, until next time, talk to you later.